What's up y'all, welcome back to another video. This is Jason here and today we're gonna to be wrapping up the Dolly 2 project we were working on in the last video. I just wanted to lay out some UI stuff, make it look a little nicer. So the first thing we need to add is a text field. So let's just call this text field. We'll call it prompt text field. Prompt text field. UI text field, this, and in here we're gonna have we're gonna have like a lot of requirements <laughs> to be honest that we're gonna we're gonna put on it. So first you wanna oh first we need to create the field UI text field, and we're gonna return the field. So Xcode won't yell at us. We set this equal to false, and then what else do we need? You want a left view mode? Always. Then you want, we want to tap into the left view, and we, what we want to do is add this little UI view here that's going to help us shift the, it's gonna help us shift the, shift the text field. Otherwise, it's gonna be like hugging the, the, the right side, the border. And it doesn't look that good, at least in my opinion. So this is what I, this is what I do to circumvent that. And we're gonna get rid of auto capitalization type, equal none. Cause um, it gets annoying. And also auto correct. No. And what else do we want? Let's add a corner radius to this. A Ten. So we we'll need to click the bounds. You go true. What else do we need? Let's do a background color of um. I think it's like system gray six. I kind of like this background color. Um, and let's create a border. Border, oh, I think it's under layer. Border. Nope. Huh. Oh, it's border width. Field dot border. Color equal. Uh, for this one, we need the UI color. You need a CG color, so I like secondary label CG color. Um, and let's add a placeholder. Please enter ah a prompt. Oh, uh, what else do we need? Let's see. I think that's it for now. Maybe we'll have a return type key of done. And now we need a button that we can use to like hit submit once we're done uh, with the text field. We'll call this, let's call this gener or submit button. Button, equal UI button. And for this button, we're gonna translate auto resizing to false. Button, hmm. What do we need? We need to set the title. Let's call this generate, generate image. For normal, Button dot background color equal. I like like let's do mint. I like I like mint. It's a nice, it's a nice cool color. Anything else? Oh, let's add a corner radius. Otherwise, it's gonna look hideous. <laughs> the button. Uh, we also actually need to add a target. 
we can do that here at target self dot well not dot <laughs> so you do selector we'll call this did tap submit button and then this will give us an error because we haven't created this function touch up inside and you get a warning because this um the self here it might not know so we'll make this variable lazy the lazy variable man did tap we'll just call submit we don't need the button all right and now let's create this obgc function objective c function <laughs> All right, so print submit. All right, and let's let's try to add this to our UI and make sure it's working because <laughs> we did a lot of code in here. And I'm gonna extrapolate or cut this and put it in another function. We'll call this a uh, private fun. What is fetch image for prompt? All right, and we'll we'll fix this up in a little bit. But first, let's just lay out our UI. So we need to add these to the view. So view, add subview. What do we have, a text field? Uh, prompt text field. We also need to add the button, submit button, and then anything else. And then I think we just, we lay out the constraints. Prompt text field top anchor equal to image view dot bottom anchor. Oh, and there's some things I wanted to change actually here too. Let's go with like 20. What I wanted to change is this, what is it, X and Y? <laughs> I had to make sure which axis I was gonna refer to. So the we're gonna get rid of the Y axis, the Y anchor, because I wanna shift the, the image view a little bit higher. That way it'll make the UI look nicer. Uh, view dot top anchor, and we'll just put this at like 150 from the top. We'll keep the we'll keep the width and height anchors the same for now. Prompt text field, and then actually let me just copy this. It's a cheat code. You guys, <laughs> you see if you can copy this. You copy this and then you paste into here because we were just going to use this similar. Only thing I want to change here is the height. I'm going to make it like 150. And for the submit button, we can do the, our little copy and paste trick again. It saves us some time because <laughs> typing the, all, all that out is, it can get kind of annoying. And I guess a lot of, it's a waste of time kind of. <laughs> And for this, we need to shrink this button. We'll do 60. This width might be too much. I'm gonna, we're gonna see right now when we run this. Let's just run it actually. I think we should, we should be good to go. All right, let's see where, where our simulator says. Ah, there we go. So we got this set up here. Uh, two things to know. Hmm. Uh, I don't think we have the background color set in this. Do system background. All right. And what else? Other than that, it looks it looks good. Uh, one thing here, if you want the like right here, you see it's in the middle. And I don't know about you guys, but I kind of prefer it at the top. Or you could shrink your prompt. I mean, your text field too. But I prefer it at the top. And to do that, you do field dot content vertical alignment dot top. Let me see if there's any other changes we want to make. No, it looks good. Maybe I'll change the SF symbol we're using to be something more exciting, I guess. <laughs> yep, all right, then oh, we, it won't work if we test this, because actually, wait, let's hit submit, and it should print, yeah, submit. All right, 
Now we need to implement this function. So let's actually put prompt here and then let me prompt there. All right, so when the user taps submit, what we wanna do is we wanna, um, we want our prompt text field to resign first responder. That'll hide the keyboard. And we want to grab the text from the text field. And that's gonna be an optional, so we're gonna use an if let. And let's, and in my case, I wanna, oh, I wanna test uh, whether, let's call this prompt text. I want to make sure like the that the the text in the text field is longer than like I don't say three characters because there's not much that's not like a lot to go with for like the the AI to generate something so at least three characters to give it something you know because I feel like it'll be a waste of a network request so with that once you have that you just want to call the fetch image prompt with prompt text and I might change this. Like I might make this an async function and then you'll have a task in here, but for now we'll use it this way. And then else, if this doesn't go through, you'll have to like, we'll do print. Um, raise. All right. And yeah, if this happens, it'll be because it's empty or it doesn't have three characters. Because this is prompt count is prompt text count is greater than three. And now this should be good to go. Let's try it. <laughs> Let's try it and see what happens. So one th prompt was that I liked was a uh, dogs pulling Santa Claus's sled. Oh, <laughs> I, I pressed the wrong button. All right, now I hit generate. I tapped on generate. I probably should have printed something. Hey, interesting, interesting. Not what we were going for, but <laughs> it'll do, I guess, right? All right, um... Now, what do we want to do? The last thing we want to do is add an activity indicator, right? Because, like, we were just sitting there and, like, we didn't know what was happening. You know? Like, anything got to happen. <laughs> and we wouldn't know. Uh, you wouldn't know because it just, it just stayed there. So, to do that, we're going to add an activity indicator. So, let activity indicator. Got to... Uh, what's it called? My spelling. <laughs> you got to sound it out sometimes. All right, so activity indicator view. And it's fairly straightforward to do this. You just, you add it to the sub view. Activity indicator. And then you set the activity indicator center to the view dot center. And I think that's it for this side. And then what you do here is, so whenever this function is called, we're gonna do start animating. And once our network request is finished, we'll do stop animating. And we actually wanna stop animating too if we get an error. You'll most likely not uh, want to like tell the user that there was an error. I'm not gonna do this for this project, but maybe that'd be something for you guys to do on your own. Present like a, a reason it failed. Maybe you could be like a network, like a, there was like a network error or something. All right, so start animating, stop animating, stop animating. Let's run this. Should work. <laughs> it should work, I don't. All right, let's do, um, it says a rooster in the, or a chicken. Chicken playing soccer or football, depending on where you're from. Oh, there it is, it's loading. 
Hey, we see it. It's pretty cool, right? But if you see it, like it's like very subtle and oh my god, this picture is not subtle. <laughs> but yeah, it's very subtle. So the way to circumvent or to improve upon this is uh, what I did was I I grabbed the indicator view. I created an indicator view, view which is a, just a UI view. And I'm gonna put the activity indicator within the UI view. So what do I do here? So I'm gonna add a sub view, indicator view. And then what we do is instead of adding the activity indicator to the view, we add it to the indicator view. And what else do we want? And now we have to take, take into account the indicator view. We want to set it equal, uh, set it equal to hidden at first. Otherwise, you just have a blank screen, and that, that happened to me. And I, and I forgot I had to set it to hidden at first. Otherwise, it's just gonna cover your whole app, and you won't see anything. <laughs> All right, indicator view dot, and I'm just gonna put the frame to view dot bounds, because we we'll want it to cover the whole screen when we're making the network request just to give better UI and UX, blah, 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 right? <laughs> and we'll set a background color. We'll do system gray again, system six, system gray six. And what I like to do too is put a little alpha so the user can see the background still because without this, it'll just be a blank screen with the spinner. But I prefer like to have like the the little, the opacity or the alpha would be 95, so you can see some of it. And we're almost done. We just need the indicator view to, is hidden right here to be false. It's gonna be false there and it's gonna be true once we stop. Oh, I accidentally hit command B. Oh, command V is right next to command B y'all, so that's, Actually, I never noticed that. All right, and this should be good to go. Let's run it, right? When in doubt, just run it. And if it breaks, blame blame me or blame somebody else. All right, is this running? Yeah, all right, let's see. Um, soccer, wait. Let's see. Chicken and dog. Playing soccer. Ah, look at that. Look at that little activity indicator and it's opaque or what? Uh, or that. Yeah, I think it's called opaque. And you can customize the opacity. And hey, where's the dog though? And the chicken has one leg. But yeah, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and the series. I'm going to be playing around more with the OpenAI API. It's always weird when I say that, but make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe. Uh, let me know what else you want to see and y'all have a good day peace i'm riding between it all in this bird to play i'm a piece of the puzzle my fit where you need me baby